everyone. I'm Carolina Agatimu and welcome to another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. This is the place where IT pros and business users get to learn more about Office 365 and all the productivity services that we have in the modern workplace. But we also get to learn about how to really empower people in our organizations along with ourselves. So I like to bring people to you from this broad community that I've had a chance to be uh, a part of for some time, um, who I really consider to be thought leaders in this area. And I have a good friend with me today who definitely falls into that category. Tracy, will you introduce yourself to our listeners? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. And, uh, and thanks for having me uh, I really all the way from South Africa. I mean, what a, what a great opportunity. So my name is Tracy, and I'm all the way from South Africa, sunny South Africa. And, uh, Great, great, crazy passion for what I do and empowering people. I think that kind of sums it up. I'm, I'm Microsoft's biggest fan, so in case they didn't know it, <laughs> I am Microsoft's biggest fan, but uh, I'm a bigger fan of people, and that's, uh, that's what I'm all about. Absolutely. You know, I think that you really hit on something that's important. You know, of course, I work for Microsoft. I'm in Microsoft Teams Engineering, been in the Microsoft ecosystem mm -hmm. basically my whole career. But my passion is really about people. Mm -hmm. Um, helping them, you know, helping them to define their journey in this business, especially mm -hmm. for women. I think that's really important. Um, but it is important for yeah. everyone to understand how you can take your diverse background and participate yes. in this technology revolution that's going on. Um, you know, so I just, I really feel like our, our focus on people is having its moment. Do you feel like that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's like that, uh, the, the, I don't know, the era of the Aquarius or something. Yes. We're getting that when it comes to human <laughs> empowerment. I mean, some planets have moved some way because I'm definitely seeing that come into what we do every day. Absolutely, for sure. absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I know we've talked about, um, and for those of you who don't know, there is the Service Adoption Specialist course yes. that's available on edX, a certified participant in that uh, course, uh, as a matter of fact, and um, I'm the author of it. And one of the areas that I talk about is the knowledge uh, the sectors that you have to understand to drive great service adoption is technical acumen yes. um, but technical acumen with a purpose right not just Love it. knowing a everything a reason exactly yes. I know you teach about that a lot tell us what that's really about um, I, I think the first thing is is that uh, before we even get to technology for anything in life for anything that we want to develop or, or get to a point of is that is that for me to remember as, as building my technical acumen was that uh, we need to stop being so hard on ourselves, okay? You don't need to know everything. You just need to know everyone who does. <laughs> and that's, that's the magic power. I need to know some of it, but I need to know, and that's about networking. So just growing that support group um, to help you fill the gaps where you have gaps, um, I think is the important thing. So that's definitely one of the most important things to start with is stop being so hard on yourself surround yourself with the people who uh, who don't struggle with the things that you struggle with absolutely well I think that's the purpose of community it's one of the reasons that I'm thrilled to um, you know kind of be the steward of that driving adoption forum out on the Microsoft technical community mm -hmm. because that's what it's for yeah. there's no way that I'm gonna know even everything about SharePoint mm -hmm. anymore and if you add teams and Power that's BI and Power Apps and Flow and all of these different pieces, it's not possible. Um, but I can query the community. I can talk to people that I've met out there. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of friendly, actually. I know people get nervous about you know, yeah. talking to folks. They may, they're going to see you at an event. They will see you on the video. and they, you know, But come and talk to us, really. We want to talk to you uh, and help you in your Absolutely. journey. Absolutely. I mean, my mom's going to see this, and I'm going to say, Mom, look, I know, like, I know, like, really, really famous people. I mean, my mom is probably doesn't even know that I can speak English, okay? So that's a really amazing oh, that's step. That's fantastic. Well, and it also speaks to the global nature mm. of this community. Yeah. Um, you know, and for me, and especially now, I think that's really important to find the common ground with each yeah. other, to be able to learn together, to problem mm. solve together, no matter what culture we may be from. Mm. And again, this isn't necessarily about technology, to your point. No. Um, but how do you apply? that theory when you're working with customers and when you're working on an Office 365 deployment for instance how does that show up in your practice and what I do every day <laughs> so so again I think um, it's so much more than just the technical skill we, we keep on talking about that and that's always been the focus for so many years but but that forms part of the skills you should have so so going into clients as well and helping them with their roadmaps and getting their heads around all this crazy stuff and how they're going to deal with it is focusing on the people side of things, is, is focusing on how we get people comfortable in this new environment that changes so much every day, that new things are added, um, and working on self-esteem. For me, self-esteem, man, 
Self-esteem is one of the first things before you get to technical skill. If we can start working on that, anyone can teach themselves anything. And that's really something I believe in. Mm -hmm. If we just fix people a little bit and give them some TLC and give them a little bit of that tech knowledge that they need, they can build out their own technical acumen, I, I reckon, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you have a habit, which I am going to now uh, mm -hmm. take, in your morning ritual for staying up to date on things. Tell tell our viewers what that is that you do. So uh, so before I even open Outlook, because that's always where the scary bits start, right? <laughs> and before these days I open Teams, okay, even though it opens on its own, but before I go into that application, I spend a couple of minutes and I just kind of catch up with what's happened in the technology space, or the things that I use, all the geeky new features. I definitely love using Twitter. I mean, Twitter Twitter is my go-to place for quickly consuming um, latest updates that's gone. I follow all the product groups as well to just see what's been released. Is there a new webinar? Is there a new blog out? I can't always deal with it because, I mean, you might have things to get to immediately. But, but I kind of take like t about 10 to 15 minutes while I have my first cup of coffee, you know, and just like kind of, it's like my morning meditation, you know, right. my self-learning little cycle. And uh, I'll make little notes as well. Maybe, you know, Teams has put out a new blog post that says that they've added something new to their features. And I'll just make a little note so that I can some way just come back to that and actually go try it out. Because if you just scan through blog articles, we forget very quickly. So mm -hmm. I use my OneNote and I just make a little wish list of things that I want to get to stuff that I want to and that that kind of just helps me stay up to date because if you only do that once a week or if you only do that once a month it's going to be crazy. Right, and it's going to feel too overwhelming. Yes, it and is. Part of what I love about that ritual, too, and, and I do something a little bit similar. I have in my to-do application a read later list. Yes. And I put things there. You, and, and it could be business article. It could be about change management. It could be about organizational development. Or it could mm. be about technology. But things I want to take the time to read yes. later. I don't get through all of them. I have no expectation I'm going to get through all of but them. But it's a start. But it is a start. Mm. Um, Absolutely. But with, on the technical side, I like to understand what's being released, if only so I know what to ignore. And that's going to sound weird coming from a Microsoft person. But there's so much information out there. There are features that we don't need yet, or that my customer doesn't need yet. Yes. And so, yes, I may need to learn about it, but I don't need to learn about it today. It's Be about prioritizing. Yes. That makes sense. Yes. I like that. Absolutely. Because there is, I do hear from a lot of customers, there's a lot of noise. And so knowing what not to pay attention to yeah. is sometimes as important as knowing what you need to actually yeah. learn uh, based on your implementation. I, I love that. And I think something as well, that it, it reminds me of something that happened recently is I, I had a client, and I'm going to say complain very carefully about a specific product that we use. And he said, but, but that annoys him because that doesn't exist yet. And that, uh, I actually did a, a night scanning. Okay, I was on my way traveling somewhere and I did my quick scan and there it was Microsoft had released it so I sent him a mail the next morning I said listen uh, Colin because you asked so nicely I pulled some strings and Microsoft has put it into the product for you <laughs> so that also great. helps because you know what we're solving problems for customers every day it might just be something that someone's urgently waiting for and then you can actually make someone's day yeah it really it really does matter mm. and a lot of that has to do with your voice in our community yeah. uh, you know I've never worked for a company and I think Microsoft has evolved mm. to mm. this to put so much much stock in the user voice, yes. customer feedback methods, all that we analyze, all of our support mm -hmm. tickets, the sentiment out in the community and social mm -hmm. networks to really hear what people are having issues with or suggestions that they have mm -hmm. for integrations and our MVP community. You know, uh, you mentioned to me you're here for MVP Summit, yes. which is a lovely event that I'm always happy to attend and have a part in. Um, but this is your second one. Tell, tell us a little bit about what it's like to be at MVP Summit mm -hmm. and hear from us in the product group and and what that feels Absolutely. like. It's actually my third one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. No, no, of course not. Of course not. I don't, uh, you know, the, 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 the um, special, like, important people. I don't expect you to always know when I'm here. But I think, uh, I think for us the most important thing, because remember, I think it takes me from my house to hotel 32 hours to get to the MVP summit. That's, that's a long way around. I think I just get home and I have to start packing for the next MVP summit. Yes, it's that exactly. Far. But, uh, but I think the most important thing for me is, uh, is that feeling of being part of something. That's unbelievable for me. In a world where, where we sometimes feel so disconnected or so lonely and we're so stuck in our little worlds of, of feeling that you're struggling on your own. So that 
feeling of, of being part of something bigger and not just being part of a community but also being closer to Microsoft is unbelievably special for me. It really is, there's nothing that even comes close to it. So even if I had to not go to a single session, but the conversations in between the coffees we have, um, the hugs, millions of hugs everywhere, because it's like a family reunion. I mean, it it's is. really, it is. and that's, that's the thing for me is that I always leave the summit um, feeling that I'm not alone, you know. There's people doing these things with us, there's people learning with us, um, these people still learning the things I'm still learning and that also just makes me feel a little bit better about myself to think that that I'm not quite the imposter that I always think that I am it really just makes me feel like I'm really part of something yeah because you definitely are let me tell you how <laughs> important you are in this community and what I love about it is that you came into this community through your set of passions mm. and and I always try to let people know people try to do a, a career development plan in technology and while I think that that's an important thing to do I also think it's important to realize that sometimes your natural passion is going to lead you to a place where you can uh, you know make a make a real career path out it of that absolutely and you have, it does you and I are poster children <laughs> for for doing this this yeah. way and because and I have a very diverse uh, background from an education standpoint Me too. I don't have a technology degree Me I, too you know um, yes was I a developer once but you don't want me coding anything now probably <laughs> um, I'd have to relearn it again but the point is is that the skills that I have from other areas and other yes. disciplines adds completely relevant absolutely. to what I'm doing today. the same for me just absolutely like video production just like this right so Ab who knew I was going to come to Microsoft and have a show? Who knew, right? It's awesome. But everything we've ever done leads up to the point of this conversation that we're having. And, right. and I'm, I've, I've, I just as a diverse uh, thing. But I, but I think something that's important there, and I don't know if we've ever spoken about this, I'll take a quick minute, is, is that, that my path, and if this could inspire anyone out there thinking, how do I get to that point? How do I get to a point where I know more and I'm part of more? I mean, and as we know, no story starts with a green salad, okay? So it started in my garden with wine, yes, okay? Right. But on the 29th of Feb, 2016, and I sat in my garden and I suddenly realized that Office 365 had 365 days, right? And I went, oh, wait a minute, maybe I can write an article every single day for 365 days. And of course, while after having a couple of glasses of wine, I posted it on social media. Woke up that m next morning, I thought, man, I'm so glad I didn't post that, but I had. <laughs> <laughs> and I suddenly had lots of people congratulating me. And I did. I did that for a year. I wrote every single day, and that's how I learned. I didn't go for some fancy degree. Every single day, I spent three to four hours um, studying it. And then I shared what I'd learned with people, my learning journey. I didn't wait until I was an expert. I learned whatever I, I, I wrote, whatever I'd learned every day. And of course, I did it twice because Microsoft went and launched Microsoft 365. So for two years, I wrote every single day what I learned. Yeah. But that just shows you, please always remember, don't wait to be uh, uh, for that innovation. Don't wait for that uh, creativity to kick in. Hard work begets passion. That's exactly right. Yeah. I start with the activity. That. Start with that thing every day or every little thing that you want to do, little bite sizes. Mm -hmm. And I promise you that leads to passion. And passion is the thing that just like rockets you into things. And I'm so thankful for that. And I think you said two really important things there. Number one, you didn't wait until someone had blessed you as an expert as an to expert. share your journey. Absolutely. This is very important for those of you on this service adoption specialist journey. Yes. I guarantee you, you have something to share with other mm. people in your organization right now. Uh, from your own journey, from what you're learning, from questions that you have. Don't discount that because someone else will benefit from you having that yes. question and sharing that information and what you're learning along your journey. Office 365 changes so quickly that the learning isn't ever yeah. done. So having that process yeah. of uh, scanning and understanding what's changing and then sharing that is super important. And also the hard work. Right. People mm -hmm. do notice that I work a lot of hours. I do, mm -hmm. but I love it. Yeah, uh, and before too. I came to Microsoft, I did a lot of free events. I organized mm -hmm. events, communities, user groups, all of that for free mm -hmm. because I enjoyed it. Um, and it, all of that has led me here. And so, you know, making sure that you, but I did it because I enjoyed it. So it didn't feel like work to me at that time, right? And so yeah. I think that there's a way to do that. And maybe that's how you feel about learning about new things about how to mm. code. Maybe you feel that way about designing training courses. Mm. Uh, maybe you feel that way about just understanding business processes. Whatever mm. it is that you would do for free, you can bring into yeah. your career space and have it be a part of your day-to-day -day yeah. activity. So I think that that's I important. think what's important on that as well, and I mean, as you know, Ikihai, I don't know how much we can see, but Ikihai yes. is something very important to me, that purpose of being and of being happy in what we do. And so many people will come to me and say, Tracy, you are so fortunate to be in a job that you're happy. And I'm like, wait a minute, sweetie, you've actually got that wrong. We take happiness with us wherever we go and we create happiness. I've been in like really miserable jobs, as happy as I am right now. Yeah. But 
but we choose to be happy. So remember as well, even if you're not in a place where you want to be right now, choose to be happy because when you choose to be happy, good things come to you. You start getting involved in great things. You might start liking what you're doing that's and right. that spreads the cheer and that puts good things on your path. So, so don't wait to become happy because that doesn't happen like that. Be happy where you are right now and that will lead to good things. Absolutely. You know, and you know, I'm just happy that you found us out here today. Yeah. You have found your tribe. Make yeah. sure to go and join the Office 365 Champions program. Uh, we're continuing to have these conversations every month. We share information about Office 365. We share other people's best practices about what they're doing to learn more about the products yeah. and also implement them really well within their environment to really empower their employees and get them more engaged. Um, and really, we're a tribe of people mm -hmm. who are interested in these sorts of topics. Uh, and you can find us all at the Driving Adoption Forum on the Microsoft Technical Community. So come and join us. You are always welcome. We are here to help. And thank you so much for coming to my That's show today. So much I fun. really appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks, Woody. See you again soon. Bye-bye.